Hi there, Prim Plant Girl here. I thought I'd bring you along today uh, to show you what I'm going to do with my pansies. Now these, if you recall, if you've been following my channel, um, are pansies that I planted uh, January 19th, I believe. And um, they're just planted, I planted them a little bit earlier than, than uh, you normally would plant pansies for in relation to my um, average last frost date. But that's because pansies are quite frost hardy and I would like to put them out earlier than my last frost date. I have a protected area where I think they do really well in that cooler weather. Our spring can go really quickly from cool almost winter weather to um, summer weather. So it's nice to get some of these spring plants that are frost hardy going just a little bit earlier outside if I can. So anyways, these are what they look like. Um, it was, must be about three weeks um, on now. So I thought that I would take them, you can see I have, they're planted in nine cell packs and it's, um, what is it? So raspberry swirl and matrix coastal here. Um, so I'd like to get these um, just separated out a little bit because I have some that are like several in a, a cell and then I have some cells that are empty. I'm really happy with the germination that I've got here with these uh, pansies. Um, it's always nice. These are the first things I've planted this year and it always feels good just to, to get some seeds started and, and see them come up. Um, but what I'm going to do is just go through and uh, take any that I can separate out and try and get some going in these empty trays or empty cells. And then um, I'll pinch off any more that are growing as doubles because most of these now have their uh, true leaves. This one has one one bigger true leaf and one just starting there. So the first leaves that a plant gets or a seedling gets are uh, their cotyledon leaves or their seed leaves. And um, those are just kind of part of the seed um, and what it uses to kind of push through the soil and, uh, and get started. And then um, the next set of leaves and all of those that come after it will look more like the leaves of the actual plant. The cotyledon leaves are usually just kind of an ovalish generic looking leaf, whereas your true leaves will have that leaf shape that you expect for that plant. Um, so these, I think every single one now has at least one true leaf, um, and most of them have a couple. So they're definitely ready for me to move around and I don't want to leave them much longer because their roots are probably starting to tangle together um, in their little packs here. So I'm just going to get on with it and get moving them and I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so how I like to do this and it can feel just a little bit ruthless, but uh, it's better for the plants in the end to be separated out and uh, have room to grow on in their own tray. So I'm just looking for the edge of this little cell here. Yeah, I have three. There's one here, one here, and one here in this cell. Um, there is one just starting to poke up in the cell beside it. I have two in this cell, two in this cell, two in this cell. This one's empty, this has one, this one's empty, and this one has two. So I think it looks like um, I could I'll definitely need one here and one here. And I have a couple of cells that have where the plants are spread out a little bit. So those are the ones that I want to go for first to try and separate. And so I just use like, I like like a skewer or something really kind of delicate here and I'm just going to try and handle it by the leaf and I'm just going to try and kind of go down and just gently try and lift this one up. So I'm not really pulling on the leaf so much as trying to lift from the bottom with my skewer and just kind of guide it by the leaf if possible. This one, yeah, they're starting to get rooted in. I've left this almost too long here. It would have been nice to do before they had so many true leaves going because that would have been less roots going at the bottom as well then. There we go. So you can see the root system that has on it already. But it'll be alright. I think I think we got enough roots there and they were far enough apart that I shouldn't have disturbed the other one too much but I'll just make a good little hole there. Try and get those roots all the way down. And it's okay if they're kind of just piled up in there, as long as they're in the, the soil. And uh, something I did earlier this morning 
is I went through and put some and watered these with transplant fertilizer before I did this so that I knew that um, or with a, a root boost I watered them with a root boost fertilizer um, just so that I knew that the they had some good nutrients in the roots and they were nice and damp because that'll help to kind of pull them out so I'm going to do the same thing over here there's one here and one here I don't know if you can see that lower down there there's that one there and one there so I'm going to try and leave the one that's more centered in the cell pack and try and get this one here it feels like the roots are way over at this side here try and this guy kind of just teased out of here now you could use a really small like a spoon or something to try and get in here this is just how I've been doing it for years and how I prefer to do it so you can see it has a really good root system going on it I've dug a pretty good hole over here and I'm just going to slide it in there just gently I don't want to break any roots or damage the stem so I'm holding it by the leaf because if a leaf breaks the plant can still get nutrients up to the other leaves and continue um, growing if I handle it by the stem especially at this stage when the stems are so fine and delicate I could wind up damaging the stem and uh, killing the plant because once that stem is damaged the uh, nutrients and water and that can't travel through it to get to where they need to go okay so it looks like my camera moved on me so I'm not sure how much of that you saw um, but I've just gone through now and I've just used my my skewer to gently tease out any duplicates I tried to find some that were you know um, had a little bit of space between them in the packs to try and tease those apart and move them into um, so they were in separate cells and then any that were really close together or just were still multiples for some reason I went through and looked for you know the ones that were just a little bit taller because the taller ones tended to be flopping over and just you know stretching and using up nutrients just to grow a stem and get lanky uh, so I trimmed those out or if there was any that were really small I took that out um, and just trimmed them down so that I just have one good healthy strong seedling in each cell so now they should have lots of room to spread their roots out and get a good strong healthy root system I made sure that any that I moved and played around with in the soil that I've packed the soil back around them like I said I gave them a little bit of a dose of a, a seedling fertilizer um, before I did this and and, and I'll continue to do that like once a week I'll give them a nice uh, little feed now of seedling fertilizer just to get them really going with their roots and getting a nice strong system in there and uh, hopefully these will all grow up to be some nice flowering pansies uh, when I'm ready to put them outside so hopefully that gave you um, some insight into how you can do this if you uh, wind up with multiple plants in one little cell and some empty cells and how you can kind of spread them out and make the most of your space. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.